During the final segment of our course on sleeve bearings, we will show you the procedures to be followed in the removal and installation of the solid category of sleeve bearings. There are two basic procedures which apply to the removal and installation of solid sleeve bearings. One procedure is used with bearings which have a transition fit, and the other is applicable to bearings which are installed with an interference fit. This is a standard three-phase induction motor. It is equipped with two solid sleeve bearings which have a transition fit in their housings. We will use this motor to show you the step-by-step -step procedure for the removal and installation of this type of bearing. The first step in the removal of the bearings will be to drain the lubricating oil from the bearing housing, like this. The housing is built into the end bell, which will be removed in a few moments. Now he removes the lubricator and any other associated equipment from the end bell. This inspection plate on top of the housing must also be removed. The inspection opening may be used to view the bearing and the oil ring on this end of the motor. The next step is to remove the cap screws which are used to secure the end bell to the center section of the motor which is called the stator housing. After removing the bolts, loosen the end bell from its fit in the stator housing and slide it off the end of the rotor shaft, as shown here. Before the bearing may be removed from the housing, it is necessary to loosen this lock screw, which holds the bearing in place. Make sure that the oil ring has been lifted out of its slot in the bearing. Then tap the bearing out of its housing in the end bell. In some cases, the bearing may simply slide out since it has a transition fit. With the bearing removed, the oil ring may now be lifted out through the inspection port, like this. This procedure may vary somewhat depending on the construction of the bearing housing. The workman now repeats the procedure for the opposite end of the motor, beginning by draining the oil from the bearing housing. Since the procedure is practically identical, we won't repeat the procedure at this end. All that remains now is to remove the rotor from the stator housing. This is necessary since we will be cleaning and inspecting the bearing fits, as well as completing other checks of the rotor, which are important to the proper operation of the bearings. With the removal of both bearings completed, the next step is to clean all of the parts thoroughly and inspect them carefully for damage or wear. The rotor should be installed between centers in a lathe and the shaft bearing and coupling fits polished to expose wear. Don't forget to check the shaft for straight with a dial indicator and to mic the fits carefully to expose worn areas. Each fit should be measured at the center and at both ends to ensure that it is acceptable for reuse. Of course, all remaining parts should also be thoroughly inspected and repairs completed or replacements obtained as required. After inspection and repairs are complete, the rotor should be reinstalled in the stator housing. Take special care not to damage any of the windings in the stator or rotor as you do so. Since we are dealing with solid sleeve bearings, it will be necessary to check their fit with the shaft before they are installed. This is done by miking them carefully at both ends, like this. Then measuring the outside diameter of the shaft journal. By comparing the two measurements, you can determine the fit between the two. Be sure to check the fit against the specifications in the manufacturer's manual to make certain that it is within acceptable limits. The next step will be to check the fit between the bearing and its fit in the end bell. To do this, he first measures the outside diameter of the bearing, then compares the measurement to the inside diameter of the bearing housing. This should be a transition fit, which, as you already know, is a fit with little or no clearance or interference. 
Now the bearing may be installed and it's fit in the housing. However, before sliding the bearing in, the oil ring must be lowered into place through the inspection opening in the top of the housing, like this. With the ring in place, the bearing may be tapped into its fit. Be very careful to avoid any damage to the oil ring while doing so, and make sure that the bearing lock screw hole is properly aligned. After positioning the bearing, the workman tightens the screw down, securing the bearing in its fit. This screw tightens against the housing and extends into the alignment hole in the bearing. Make sure that it does not jam the bearing, resulting in distortion. We are now ready to reinstall the end bell on the stator housing. However, a light coat of oil should be applied to the rotor shaft to allow the bearing to slide more easily over the shaft during installation. Slide the end bell over the end of the rotor shaft, taking special care not to damage the oil ring as you do so. Start the end bell into its fit in the stator housing. Align the bolt holes in the end bell with those in the stator housing and replace the cap screws. The cap screws should be tightened using the crossover method to avoid cocking or tilting of the bell, which could damage the bearing. After you have secured the end bell, double check the oil ring through the inspection post to ensure that it is seated properly in the slot in the bearing. Then reinstall the lubricator to the bearing housing. That completes the reassembly of this end of the motor. You would then repeat the procedure to reinstall the bearing on the opposite end of the motor, beginning by checking the clearance as shown here. We won't go into detail on this end, since it is practically identical to that you were just shown. After completing reassembly of both ends, the workman turns the rotor by hand to check for any binding. If any is detected, it will be necessary to locate the problem now and correct it. Measure the total end float of the rotor by seating the rotor on the outboard bearing and then moving the rotor until it is stopped by the inboard bearing and compare these limits with magnetic center as scribed on the shaft. Don't forget to replace the lubricant in both of the bearing housings. Again, the manufacturer's manual will specify the type and amount of lubricant required. After replacing the oil, turn the rotor again to distribute the oil to the bearings and to check the operation of the oil rings. The final step will be to replace the inspection covers on both of the bearing housings. That completes our examination of the procedure used to remove and install solid sleeve bearings with a transition fit in a piece of equipment. The removal and installation procedures for a solid sleeve bearing with an interference fit is different than you were just shown. The workman is holding a bowl from a vertical centrifugal pump which has just been disassembled. The bowl contains a solid sleeve bearing which has an interference fit in the bowl. We'll use it to show you how the procedure differs. Since the bearing does have an interference fit, it will be necessary to press it out of the bowl. The workman is now setting the bowl up for the operation. He then uses the machine to press the bearing out of its fit. Once the bearing is removed, it is normally discarded. This is necessary because a bearing installed with an interference fit can seldom be reused once it has been pressed out of its fit. The bearing fit in the bowl should then be cleaned and inspected carefully for burrs or other damage which could affect the fit of the new bearing to be installed. Now obtain a replacement bearing with the proper specifications. The next step will be to determine the fit of the bearing in the bowl. To do this, the workman first measures the outside diameter of the bearing, then measures the inside diameter of the bearing fit in the bowl, 
comparing the two measurements will give you the amount of interference between the bearing and fit. If you're not sure about the fit, consult your supervisor. Now, align the bearing with the fit in the bowl and press it carefully into place. After the bearing is seated in its fit, the workman measures the inside diameter, then compares it to the OD of the shaft fit. Comparing the two measurements will give you the amount of clearance fit. If it is unsatisfactory, it may be necessary to machine the bearing. This is normally done on a lathe, as shown here. If it is necessary to machine the bearing, make certain that you clean all of the shavings out of the bearing and bowl after you have finished. A stray shaving could ruin the bearing and shaft after the bowl is reinstalled on the pump. That concludes our examination of the removal and installation of the two basic types of solid sleeve bearings, those with transition fits and those with interference fits. Although you will encounter some variations, you will soon find that the procedures we have shown you will apply to the majority of bearings in this category. We have some questions for you now in exercise number four in your workbook.